In this video, we're going to look at solving a problem of the third type that we've discussed for determining the diameter of a pipe or a duct, given a desired flow rate and a uh, head loss criterion. So in this example, we're going to look at air at atmospheric pressure that's being transported through a 150 meter long plastic tube or duct at a rate of 0.35 cubic meters per second. Um, if we want the head loss across this uh, pipe section to not exceed 20 meters, what is going to be the minimum diameter of the pipe required to um, achieve this head loss requirement? So to solve this problem, again, the first step is going to be to write down all of the information that we do know. So we know all of the uh, parameters of the fluid. We know the length of the duct section. We know that the head loss is not to exceed 20 meters and we know the desired volumetric flow rate and our objective here is to find the diameter or the the section the, the diameter of the duct that's going to meet those requirements so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down some fami familiar equations since I know the desired volumetric flow rate I know that the average velocity of the fluid can be calculated if I knew the diameter but again I don't know the diameter of the pipe that's what we're trying to solve for also, to um, characterize the flow and determine the head loss, I need to calculate the Reynolds number. And I need to calculate the Reynolds number, but that involves the diameter of the pipe as well. I need the Reynolds number because I need to ultimately determine the head loss. And to determine the head loss, I need this friction factor, F, which is based, according to the Colebrook equation, on the Reynolds number. I also know that I'm flowing through a plastic pipe. The air is moving through the plastic pipe. And based upon um, charts and information in your textbook, we can estimate that the roughness of that plastic pipe is approximately zero. So thankfully, one of the terms in the Colebrook equation is going to go to zero. Um, so that simplifies the analysis a bit because our relative roughness is approximately zero right here. However, we still find that we have these three equations that involve um, the diameter of the pipe explicitly and we also have this Colebrook equation which depends upon the Reynolds number and the Reynolds number depends upon the diameter of the pipe so essentially we have four equations that have to be solved simultaneously um, so that we can find the diameter of the pipe that's going to satisfy all of these conditions. Now remember that the head loss that we're looking for in this case is 20 meters. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, substitute. I can say that all of this must be equal to 20 meters uh, to satisfy the requirements of this design problem. Okay, so now to approach this, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go um, to Excel and again I'm going to enter the density, the absolute viscosity of um, the air. I'm going to uh, make sure I have my gravitational constant in case I need it. All right, and then I'm going to go ahead and work this, uh, write this spreadsheet out as though I were solving a problem that I knew the pipe diameter. Now again, remember that we don't know what the pipe diameter that is, and that's ultimately what we're trying to solve for. Um, the volumetric flow rate, oh, this should be in cubic meters per second, and um, that is given for this problem as 0 0.35. Um, again, if we knew what the average velocity, or excuse me, if we knew what um, the pipe diameter was, we should be able to calculate the average velocity of the air moving through, the, um, through that pipe. But again, uh, we don't know what the pipe diameter is. Right now, I've just entered a dummy value of one meter so that I know that my equations are working properly. Okay, for my surface roughness, again, I know that we are moving through a um, pipe that has a, um, that's made out of plastic and therefore it has a roughness of zero. Um, and I also know that I'm going to have to calculate my friction factor using the Colebrook equation. So I've entered the Colebrook equation, again, the right-hand side and the left-hand side that depend upon this friction factor value. I've calculated the difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side, and I've also calculated the squared difference. And finally, I'm going to calculate the head loss based upon all of this information. 
Now again, remember that we're seeking a head loss of approximately uh, 20 meters. And based upon my pipe diameter that I've entered of one meter, we are, uh, we are definitely uh, not having a head loss of 20 uh, meters. So what we need to do is we need to adjust this pipe diameter so that we can get closer to that 20 meter value. So I don't think a one meter duct uh, based upon the resulting head loss that we have right here um, is going to get us to the, um, to the desired uh, value of uh, 20 meters. So I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to make it about, um, let's say, point, uh, point 0.1, just for the fun of it. And we'll see what that does. OK. So again, I haven't calculated the friction factor yet. And so that makes this, uh, this head loss really high. So maybe 0.1 meters is, not, is, is too small. Uh, maybe let's go to 0.5. And uh, OK, that's going to probably be a little too large now because I'm at a 0.1 meter head loss. Or sorry, about, uh, sorry, about 1 meter head loss. So maybe a value of point, uh, let's say, 0.3. Okay, so that gets me to 12 meters of head loss, uh, which, which seems pretty close. So now that I'm close in my diameter guess, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, click on the head loss value, and I'm going to go up to my solver tool, and I'm going to set my solver objective to the head loss value. So I'm going to select the head loss cell as my objective. And now I want that to be set to a value of 20. So I come over here, check the uh, radio button value of, and specify that as 20. Oops. Didn't mean to hit enter there. All right. Now I need to specify what um, cells Excel is allowed to change to try to make that head loss value be a value of 20. So the things that we can vary now are the pipe diameter, and also we need to vary the friction factor. We need to come up with the friction factor that satisfies the Colebrook equation. All right, but remember that the Colebrook equation, I haven't set any constraints on the Colebrook equation. So um, what we want for the when the Colebrook equation is satisfied, we need that the square difference between the right hand side and the left hand side be equal to zero. So to add that constraint, I come down here to the constraint section and click on the Add button. I then click on the square difference reference cell. In the middle here, it has less than or equal to. I'm going to set that to an equal sign. And my constraint is that that value, the square difference, has to be a value of 0. All right. <clears throat> Now that I have all of that in place, I should be able to click the Solve button. And what Excel will do is it will adjust the pipe diameter as well as the friction factor value <coughs> to generate a condition where my head loss value is going to equal 20. And it has successfully found a value of pipe diameter and friction factor that will meet that condition. So to meet that condition, the pipe diameter is going to have to be uh, about uh, 0.26 meters uh, in diameter, or 0.27 meters in diameter, um, to meet the condition of 20 meters of head loss. Now again, we've used the solver tool in Excel to solve this system of equations where we have a couple of things that need to, uh, to, to be constrained. The, the major constraint in this case was that the Colebrook equation had to work out so that the squared difference between the left-hand side and the right-hand side was identically zero, and Excel was allowed to change the friction factor <coughs> excuse me, to make that happen. But remember that the Colebrook equation was based on the Reynolds number, and the Reynolds number, in turn, was based upon the pipe diameter. So Solver was also allowed to change the pipe diameter to come up with this objective of 20 meters of head loss.